Today I'm going to be showing you how to keg up beer from the catalyst fermenter, specifically using a low do or low dissolved oxygen method. I happen to have two amazing IPAs right now that are ready to keg up and I don't want to introduce any kind of oxygen in there uh, that can cause these to go bad quicker than I want them to. First of all, you're going to need some equipment to do this properly. Uh, what I have here are two lengths of 3 8 inch inner diameter silicone tubing. Uh, these are what we're going to use for gas line and for transfer line. Next I have the little funnel that comes with the catalyst fermenter and also just a little cheap clamp that I can clamp one of these guys off with. Um, also, I have my keg coupler, which is for a Sankey keg next to me. If you have a Cornelius keg at home, then obviously you'll want a Cornelius keg style disconnect. And also I have a, a CO2 tank at my disposal, a little bottle of some sanitizer, and my sanitizing bucket. First of all, let's just uh, start by getting all of our hoses and any equipment that's going to be in contact with the beer into our sandy bucket. Let it sanitize for a couple minutes. I happen to use Sarsan, kind of the standard. So one of the beautiful things about the Catalyst fermenters is that they are very easy to harvest yeast. I happen to have some Julius yeast, which is the seasonal strain from Imperial in here. So uh, our first step is actually gonna be to close off our dump valve here. And uh, I'm gonna put a couple rags under here because these do have a tendency to uh, dribble a little bit once we release this. And I'm actually going to harvest this beautiful yeast cake that's sitting in the jar underneath here. So, take, I got a nice clean lid and cap that I'm also going to dunk in my sanitizer here. So we have that guy ready to go. And let's see how tight this is. Yeah. So I just got to loosen up this jar. And there we go. So it'll probably dribble out a little bit on me now what we got that guy for. Look at that beautiful, beautiful yeast cake, by the way. Now, even though, you know, that should have been clean under there, I'm going to take my spray bottle and really get up in there and uh, squirt this guy out. Can never be over sanitary. So now that our funnel and hose is nice and sanitary, we are going to take it and actually attach it to our CO2 right here. Bam, and it should fit pretty loosely. As long as it's got an airtight seal, it's fine. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. And we're going to screw this guy very loosely under here. And uh, the key here is that I'm not tightening it all the way because I am actually going to turn on my CO2 now. So I'm just barely going to crack this and what it's actually going to do is it's going to purge this whole line with CO2 and it's going to push out any oxygen that might be in that line and it should pour out here. I can actually feel it with my fingers which is a good sign. I'm just going to let this run for about another 10 seconds or so and at that point it should be a very purged line. Now it's been 10 seconds of that. And I'm going to take my clamp and clamp this line off as close to there as I can. And I'm also going to tighten this up. So now we have essentially a closed system here. It's been purged with CO2, so there's no oxygen that's going to be in contact with the beer. This guy's all tight, so nothing's getting in there. Our next step is going to be to pull this guy off. So that is all ready to go. Sanitize my cake coupler as well. Our next step is going to take that second silicone hose we were talking about and hook this up to our CO2 tank. So I'm going to hook that up there. This one's got a little clamp on it too. And uh, we're going to do essentially the same process, which is going to be to purge that line with as much CO2 as possible. Also, I'm going to go ahead and open up my three piece airlock and uh, uh, pull off my uh, little bubbler mechanism of it. Hopefully, there we go. Perfect. So I'm going to pull that off real fast. I'm going to open up my CO2 gently. Perfect. And close that off. And there's a reason why I chose 3.8 silicone. And that's because 
it's stretchy enough to actually get over the inner tube of these little three-piece airlocks and you might have to work it over a little bit but so you can actually put this over the top of these airlocks so now we really do have a closed system and as you can probably start to figure out at this point I'm going to take my keg coupler which is also now sanitary I'm going to hook that onto my hose from the bottom get my keg which has also been purged and uh, get this guy sprayed out and then I'm going to hook this guy up too so this keg is actually under pressure right now I actually just noticed I grabbed the wrong keg coupler oh here we go I should be able to do this so I'm actually backing off my uh, pressure relief valve on here so that hopefully when I engage this um, it won't try to blow CO2 everywhere. There we go, perfect. So you can probably hear a little bit of noise that came out. That's actually our gas that was coming out. Um, so now at this point we will open this guy back up. We're going to open up our dump valve at the bottom. You can see some bubbles that came up there. So that's, that's why we really want to make sure that's purged because those, that little air pocket in there um, is now being released into the beer. So that's all CO2, which is a good thing. At this point, we can just barely crack our gas. Um, you should have your regulators set down pretty low too when you're doing this, um, just because these fermenters are not designed to hold pressure. So as you can see, what I've set up here is what we like to call a closed system, at least in the professional brewing world, where I have CO2 that's going in, displacing the volume of what should have also been CO2, I guess, in there. Um, it's having a little bit of positive pressure. It's helping push beer out the bottom and into my keg, which is going to displace the CO2 that was purged when we cleaned the keg in the first place. This is the best method by far to keg any of your new world IPAs, anything like hazies, anything like milkshakes, um, your quikes, uh, you name it and it is a fantastic method in order to preserve all of those really really nice intense fruity aromatics in beer. Thanks for watching guys hopefully you tuned into this and uh, learned a lot and uh, now you're ready to low dough transfer some stuff from catalyst fermenters into either a Sankey or a corny keg. If this information helped you click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, comment some stuff down below, send us some beer online because we like drinking. Why do you gotta make me feel bad?